Hello and welcome to Toolbox Talks on the Sideshed, and today we have a Q&A. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer, then head across to thesiteshed.com where you can leave a written or an audio question. Just if you want to skip the queue, quick heads up, we do reward loyalty. So if you've left us an iTunes review, then we do get to those ones first. Um, anyway, let's dive right in. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. So on uh, Toolbox Talks today, we have a Q&A and the question is from Brad from Pacific Plumbing. Um, Brad wants to know what's the best way to get a landline set up for his business. Um, this is a a scenario that I see very often with um, tradespeople having their mobile phones on their website. And really, from a from a local business point of view, it doesn't really look that professional. So you're often better off getting a, um, a professional business phone line set up that may potentially connect to an answering service or divert through to your mobile phone or whatever it is. However, I'm not the expert in this field, but I have asked uh, Nabil from Hyphen Group to join us today on this call because Nabil has helped me with my phone system over the years. Um, I'm currently running a VoIP service and uh, Nabil is going to dive into a little bit more about what that is. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to uh, get to the bottom of this and find out what is the best solution for a tradie who works on the road. So um, Nabil, welcome. Hello. How are you, sir? Good, good. Excellent. So um, yeah, mate, as you, as you know, um, so Brad's a plumber. He lives, in, lives and works in Sydney and he he has, I think, three, two guys working for him now. Mm -hmm. um, he's out on the road a lot. However, he wants to move away from having his mobile phone as his main phone number for his business. So, yeah, look, I just wanted to um, bring you on board in this conversation here because obviously you're the expert and you deal with this stuff day in, day out. Firstly, what, what are the options there for, for somebody in Brad's situation? So the options is to have like a, a PSTN line or 1300 number if he wants to. And then we divert, like he diverted that from like the PSTN line to a answering machine, like an automatic answering machine, or straight directly to his mobile iPhone. What's a what's a PSTN? So PSTN is the normal uh, phone line, like zero two number or zero three number, okay. like a landline number. Yep. Okay. And then what about what about one three hundred numbers or things like that? Is that or one eight hundred numbers? Like what what sort of businesses do they typically suit better? So for the business like the one three hundred number back then before like they used to be used. So like for my, like for for a business that is national nationwide. Yep. So instead of getting the, the you know you're accustomed to, to dial zero two or zero three, they just call one three hundred number. Yep. And that one three hundred number eventually forward to a zero two number like to an endline number eventually. Mm hmm. Uh, so this is the one three hundred number and the one eight hundred number. They're kind of the similar. Okay. Now the pricing is kind of different between a having a landline number or a one three hundred slash one eight hundred number. They're like they're slightly different with the uh, with the uh, with the billing itself. Is that is that as well due to things like contracts and that kind of stuff, or not really? No, no. It's like the one three hundred number because it's you, you, you'll be charged on an incoming call. Like the like Brad, if like let's say in in Brad, Brad he want he want to have a one three hundred number, he will be paying for each incoming call coming to the one three hundred number. Gotcha. So that's the difference of a one three hundred number call. When somebody calls that number, mm -hmm. the owner of the number gets charged. Exactly. Ah, okay. Interesting. Okay, so in in Brad's specific scenario, that w would you recommend that he established a a Sydney based number, like a zero two number? Yeah, yeah. If his business is local, let's see, like, a better, better solution for him, a zero two number, and then yeah, he can divert it to everywhere he wants. Okay, and would and would in that scenario, in your experience, um, for somebody that works, you know, on site for a lot of the day, mm. uh, is it advised to have an answering service, or do you recommend they just forward it to their mobile phone, or is it kind of specific to the how the person that we're talking about, or? Yeah, it depends like how like how he wants to treat the the call, like how urgent the call like, like you know, the call is, and how he wants to, to treat them. Like if you want to answer every call, so a better way is to send it to the voice, like you know, to his um yeah. to his mobile, or he can have a, a failover. Like if he doesn't answer the call, the the call fail over to a answering machine, like to leave a message, and the message gets sent as an email to his email address. So there's a lot of options there. Oh, okay. So it will actually transcribe that message into text, and then it can email it to you or text it to you no, or something. No, actually, it will send you. It will send you as a voice message as an attachment in the email. Oh, wow. Okay. So you can listen to it. Yeah, right. Oh, well, that's handy. Mm -hmm. And so what? what is VoIP? 
So VoIP is voice over IP, like uh, it's voice over the internet. Yeah. Basically. Nowadays, uh, like this is a, a new technology. For example, NBN, all the NBN. If you have an NBN connection, you have voice uh, telephone over that. Yeah. It's a voice over IP. So it's basically you're sending the voice over the internet link. And so what are the what are the pros and cons of, I suppose, having a VoIP number and then a fixed landline? So there is a fixed landline, you you are physically limited. So the fixed landline, you know, you say, like, I want a landline in this address, and you, you stick on that one. If you want to move to a different address, you need to go back to the provider and say, I'm going to move, so they're going to go to this process and move again to the initial process with the VoIP is address like this regardless whether with the address is all you need to do is if you if you move a house your number is still the same so all you need is internet address internet uh, connection that's all so effectively with a VoIP number you can you can pretty much take it wherever you want, you want. yeah as long as there's some sort of internet connection that you exactly can access you can put it on your mobile if you want. like you can download an application and have it on your mobile for example okay I mean that's yeah I mean that's obviously something that I do myself I've got that VoIP number that comes through my mobile phone it's quite handy for when you're in scenarios where you travel a lot exactly what why would anybody now go for a landline option when there's when there's so much flexibility with a VoIP setup um I believe most of it because some people they still think that uh, VoIP is not reliable for some reason or maybe they no one told them about the VoIP yep. but uh, basically we are in a stage where the VoIP technology is really uh, reliable. Basically, most of the businesses, most of the call centers, in, like everywhere, are using the voice over IP. So, but yeah, that's that's the only reason why people are going through, like you know, they're taking PSTN number. And as I said before, now every NBN connection is a VoIP. Like if you get a phone line of it's a VoIP over IP phone. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So, yeah. so that traditional landline model is definitely getting phased out. Exactly. So, tell me why. Is it going to get to the point, do you think, where even maybe mobile phone numbers are going to be starting to become more and more obsolete as VoIP starts to get more traction? Um, the thing is, with, with VoIP number, like with, uh, you know, with, with the mobile uh, numbers, uh, I don't know, uh, because it has the, mob- the mobility of it. So this is a big advantage of the mobile. And even the internet, like, you know, the in- like, like as I said, like with the VoIP, you always need the internet okay. to get to work. So with the mobile phone, even if you have a VoIP number on, on your phone, it's still relying kind of on the GSM technology. Ah, okay. So it's not it's not yet at a stage where it's going to replace it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so if Brad wanted to um, get a local land, uh, land number for his business, mm-hmm. um, how would he go about securing that phone number? And then how would he go about that process behind getting it set up as a, vo- as a VoIP service or however that works. Yeah, so so he wants to find, first of all, like he wants to, to look at VoIP providers and he wants to uh, request a phone number from them. Now, there's plenty of VoIP providers uh, in Australia. Like if you jump online and you, you look, there's plenty of them. And everyone, like every VoIP provider has their own packages. And uh, yeah, so they're basically like it's normal. Like normally, it's just like a, an application you put, you submit it online. They give you the phone line and it's, it's yours and depends on what, what the, you know, what the VoIP provider uh, gives you as a service. You can set up like the PBX functionality or depends on what, what you buy, what package you buy. Okay. But yeah, with the VoIP, as I said, like it's very, you know, it's very flexible. You can do, I, can, I could say almost everything with it. Yeah. Okay. And I know um, you guys have, or your t- your team has actually put together some really, um, some really handy infographics here, which kind of outline different types of phone services that might suit different types of trade-based businesses. So we've got one here for a home-based business, um, one here for a, you know, a company that might operate with, say, 10 or so um, employees, exactly. and, then, yeah. and then another um, another infographic, which is tradies with multiple offices or you know large sort of exactly. corporate yeah. setups. So um, we'll, we'll uh, post that in the show notes because that sort of gives a good visual description of, of the different um, options that are available. Is there anything that you'd like to add to add to that or anything else you can recommend to Brad for his Oh no, uh, the, the only thing that I, I didn't mention through this uh, podcast is the VoIP. The, there's a good advantage with the VoIP. It's very, you can extend it. Like, let's say you can, like, you start with a business, a small business, a couple of handsets or even one handset and you want, you grow. So you can, with, with the same number, with the same system you're using, you can grow it. Like, you can, you can get it until like up to 100 uh, users on it. So from that way, it's very, like you can expand it as much as you like. 
and it's very more- easy to expand it. Okay, so it's more of a scalable solution. Yeah, exactly. So what would the alternative be from a landline situation in that scenario? Would you have to bring in, say, 100 different landlines or what? Yeah, exactly. So be, so like in the PSD line, there's uh, like if you want to have multiple lines, for example, each line, you need like, first of all, like let's say you want to have a PBX, for example, uh, a phone system. So if you every line you need to buy another PSD line for it. So, so it's, what's PBX again? PBX is a phone system, you know, like this transfer call, everything like this. This is a system that manage your phone lines. Okay. In that situation, like the, the, the system grows and he wants like multiple lines at the same time. Right. Uh, during his businesses with the PST, with the PSTN or the landline, you need like one line per call. Where with the voice, with one line, you can have multiple calls on the same on the same line itself. Okay. So, say for an example, it was a company that. It might they might have a plumbing division, an electrical division, and an That's air right. conditioning division. Right. So, so that in that scenario, with the traditional landline setup, you would need to have three different lines coming into the building. That's right. Yeah. However, That's right. with VoIP, you just need the one. One, and then you can send send it if you want to a an IVR and say press one for plumbing, press two for electrical. Okay, got it. So it's far more. Of a, a lot more of a scalable solution exactly. than, yeah. than traditional right. landline. Okay, well, that's that's good to know. Look, I think we've pretty much covered anything I wanted to talk about there. Um, Brad, I hope that answers your question. And for all you listeners out there, I hope you are, you've got something out of that. As I mentioned, we're going to post these infographics that uh, the Hyphen Group have created for us in the show notes. So if you uh, want to jump on there, you can have a look and you can see what business you are and which solution would, would uh, benefit you the most. And I'll also put there a link to um, Hyphen Group. So if you need to get in contact with Nabil or his team and get yourself set up on a solution like that, then you'll have their uh, contact details to do that. So so uh, thanks very much, Nabil. That was no fantastic. Problem. I learned something there, definitely. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, mate. So um, okay. look, we'll be in touch. Thanks again. And, oh, no um, problem. And uh, thank you, listeners. That's a wrap. So if you haven't already, head across to the siteshed.com and register for our Toolbox Talks where you'll be regularly sent uh, great episodes just like this straight to your inbox so you'll never miss one. Uh, If you want to join the community, you can head across to the siteshed.com forward slash members where for a small monthly fee, you'll get access to regularly updated training material as well as access to our forum where you can mingle and collaborate with trade-based business owners just like you from all over the world. If you're enjoying this podcast, please head across to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. We greatly appreciate it, and it helps us spread the word and reach the masses. Likewise, if you know anyone that might benefit from the content we create, then please go ahead and share this with them. You've been listening to Toolbox Talks by The Site Shed. For more great content just like this, head across to thesiteshed.com and join the amazing community of savvy trade-based business owners.